Hey everybody, good morning. This is Brandon Malson, Justin Smith with Tracks and Sign. I'm looking at a a window where a little snow has fallen down here in Michigan and it's stuck, so makes it a little easier for um tracks and uh and just different animal movements to be visible and stay longer. So today we're going to be talking about um, getting outside and, and following some of those snow tracks, uh, looking for different areas to hunt for this upcoming turkey season, some deadlines that are coming up in at least Michigan here. Um, a few tips and tricks. We won't get too far into detail, but um, we'll talk some strategy on um, how you can have some fun out there in the woods. What do you think about that, Justin? That sounds awesome. You know, it's funny. You- I, as you as you look outside your your window, Brandon Brandon has a very nice piece of land where his home is, and he has like a zoo back there. The amount of animals you see, and what do you catch on your home <laughs> security camera? <laughs> well, home security cameras, yeah, it's, it's solid every uh, you know either every night or at least weekly. But that that uh, fox I caught yesterday, yeah. uh, well, it didn't catch. I uh, saw it in the back of the yard. That was awesome. Haven't seen that in daylight. Since I lived here the last two years, very cool. Yeah, that is sweet. And then you, you got, you got coyotes, you got foxes, you got some pretty big deer. Yeah, yeah. There's one of the big boys came walking back through a few nights ago. There's a I posted it once. There's there's like a bachelor group of four. So there's I don't know how many acres are here. I'm, I'm just on one, but each of our neighbors all have one, and it kind of goes in like a a strip. It was an old apple orchard from the sixties. My neighbor's house is the original, it's like the farmhouse. And there's a, one of the original apple trees is still on there. So the deer from all around gravitate to that thing. I just happen to benefit. My yard happens to benefit from being, I don't know, 30 yards from it, 20 yards from it. So, um, there's a bachelor group that comes around every summer and they're just getting bigger, man. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's super cool. I was bummed at one point in the wintertime after the rut. Well, it wasn't wintertime. It was, just, it was post rut. I saw what I think to be the, the big, uh, 12 point. It's the biggest one out of the four was, was coming over between our houses and then, and then limping away. And so I don't believe I've seen him since. Oof. And I'm hoping he, I'm hoping he made it. That other big one that came through the other night, um, I think that was just a, just a nice size, um, eight. I can't really gather. It was just the way he was walking, but nice size rack. Either eight or or the ten. The group had a twelve, a ten, and two two inch. <laughs> so I know they're wow, hanging out there all summer. I w- in I w- velvet. <laughs> you can see him grow every day. It's so cool. That is it. That is but, really cool. Yeah. So have you named them? Yard. Do they have names? No, I haven't. I haven't. I was going to name a fox, but cause I've only seen a fox on uh, camera. Little guy's fast, either guy or, or female. But um, this is the first time I've, I've seen it in daylight. It was awesome. Very, yeah, that is really cool. What about uh, <laughs> what about turkey? Oh, my gosh. So last year, and mind you, I, I'm not like on the farmland. I live in rochester hills michigan so it's it's a you know there's a city but just this this part happens to be built back in the 60s so it's we get a little more land right here and i'm outside my wife has kicked me out at this point because not not literally out of the house but (laughs) outside into the yard because she has she has had enough of hearing me practice my hen cluck calls so I'm out there just now I'm being obnoxious and, and joking around and she's laughing, but I'm over there with a box and, you know, diaphragm and uh, <laughs> just making all sorts so of noise. Funny. And my neighbors are laughing and lo and behold, the next day, a strutting Tom comes walking across our front yard. No way. A solo Tom. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, that is unbelievable. <laughs> I, see, I mean, they're, they're around here in Michigan, out in the suburbs, but um, it's just hilarious that this thing was literally walking through the front yard down the neighborhood. 
He wanted to hang out, Brandon. Oh, I'm telling you, well, our last podcast, I was talking about how uh, how incredible their sense of uh, location is. They're like they're like heat seeking missiles. They hear that noise and they can pinpoint exactly what where you're at. And uh, I wonder, and I would love to keep this believe <laughs> to, to keep this a belief in my head, but um, you know I have doubts that that thing heard me the day prior. And came looking. Oh for yeah, a sweet sweet hen. I mean, too, too, <laughs> it's too crazy of a coincidence for the, for your belief not to be real. No, for sure. I'm, sti- I'm sticking with. Yeah, you. Ha- I mean, I'm I'm with you, Brandon. I fully support <laughs> your belief system there. Oh man! So um, the other day, I got to get out in the woods, and um, on, on the beginning of this snowfall here, it's not it's not feet. It's uh, it's just a nice covering of the ground where tracks are sticking. So um, Where'd you go? I get excited. Went out to Bald Mountain. Bald Mountain. Um, local uh, state rec, state game area out here in Oakland County, just north of where I live. And uh, went out to a spot where I did quite a bit of scouting and hunting last year and wanted to go into an area. When I was deer hunting this year, I came across a flock of turkeys where I hadn't seen them before, but I had suspicions they were going. So this this first snowfall, um, I gave it a day or at least like the, the whole day. And then I went walking. Hopefully I could find some. Didn't see any out there, but um, I walked about a half mile back into it and um, walked left instead of where I typically go right. So when I, when I say I go right, typically there's about a hundred acre plot of this public land that I've covered pretty well. And I showed you my, oh, your onyx is ridiculous. <laughs> I marked everything, but everything. Um, yeah. Just everything of the hundred acres. It's hilarious. And, uh, it's impressive. <laughs> I, so instead of turning on that hundred acres, I turned off and, um, and, and there's some elevation changes. So I was interested in, in what's going on over there. Also a lot of the flooded areas because the summer was so dry the flooded areas from last year aren't the same flooded areas this year, or at least they're a little shallower or, or just, you know, not there, which is, you know, concerning for when we're trying to go find roosting areas. So that's why I turned left a little deeper and lo and behold, I run into some traffic, no, uh, no turkey traffic, but some deer traffic. And then I uh, continued further down the hill and found a brand new flooded area that, um, I don't believe I saw anybody even near there last year hunting. So it's a thick area to get into. And um, I'm hoping that might be a, a spot where I can find a nice roof. So I, st- I set up a cell cam. Um, something went off last night at like 440. Could have been a deer, could have been a squirrel. Who knows? But um, Could have been one of those squirrels for- with antlers. Yeah, yeah, one of those big ones. Those big, oh, always big. <laughs> it's the only only one. So hang on, real quick. So you um. So I, I know you you're about to share with us about the stealth camera, but can we backtrack for a second? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're you decided to go a different route. Great. Um. So you found this you found this new area where there was some higher like the water table was higher. What what's going on? Like a marsh. De- describe so to me the area. Trails, yeah, the trails up in the air. And, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's just higher in elevation and then it, it comes down to a ridge. So it's, it's not necessarily, there's, there's Creek out there, but there's, it's more so like flooded areas. And so I wouldn't want to call it, I guess there's very shit, like very small Creek or stream bottoms if you want. But what I found out there is walking down like a kind of a ravine ish area, and it, it just it just goes down in elevation enough where the water table is, is sitting there and it is now frozen. And so what I found last year, um, those areas back in those secluded um, heavy timber areas, that's where they would like to roost. Okay. So away from the trails, um, a decent amount of flooded area where they have some some, some nice trees. Um, and they, and then 
they like to get above that water or around that water up in trees. Interesting what I, and, and also they're big birds. Like they're, they're heavy. They're huge. They don't fly very well. I mean, they get up in the air obviously, but they're not like, you know, a little songbird flying around or, you know, a eagle or a hawk. At Gra- top yeah. They're not feet. graceful. <laughs> no, my gosh. They're very big and clumsy and, and they, and they, Sometimes they'll get up into a tree and then they'll hop branches to get, you know, higher up and roost. But I've also seen them use, um, like the hills, the, the air, like a, if there's a trail or a game run or something going down a hill, I've seen them like run down the hill to get some speed and then almost use like the bottom as like a launch pad up into over the water into a tree. Dang. And so I'm looking for things like that where they'd be able to easily, um, if they're going back to roost, uh, where they can get a little running start or, or not necessarily always a run, but just a, a little launch pad where they can go up into a tree and not get their wings, um, not run into obstruction by the branches. Hey, Brandon, random, random fact here. How fast do you think yeah. turkey can run? Oh, man. Um well, I've only seen it I've seen it run hmm ten miles an hour twenty five really isn't that crazy? Wild turkey can reach up to speeds of twenty five miles an hour Wow, I guess I've um oh you know that makes sense. It's crazy. Well, I, I, they weren't running twenty five. Well, it was it was a shorter distance, but when they see those um, those Tom decoys, wow. they run and then they jump up and and try to you know kill it with its spurs or injure it with its spurs. Twenty five miles an hour. That's fast. And then since we're on this random trivia thing here, um, they get small when they're. We know when you're describing them, they really can't fly, but they are able to use their wings. They actually can, yeah. like you were saying, they catch these small little spurts of, you know, flying. And during yeah. those small little bursts, they can actually reach up to 55 miles an hour, like speed wise. Flying? Yeah. I mean, it's not, <laughs> but it's not long. It's just crazy to think that, a, you know, a 30, a 20, 30, 40 pound, I mean, even bigger than that sometimes, but a turkey can, yeah. it's, I don't know. But, okay, That's sorry. Unbelievable. It is. Unbelievable. I've, um, in my in my time out in the woods, I've spooked a number of turkeys, of course, <laughs> from from their roosting trees on accident, of course. But like you see them, and it's it's just an enormous bird all of a sudden making all sorts of ruckus up in a tree, and and their wings are hitting branches, and <laughs> and then they fly away. It's just it's not fast. <laughs> have you noticed? Have you noticed the um? So I know you mentioned they like to kind of be closer to water, like overhanging or around a, a water source. Have you noticed yeah. a like? Are there a specific type of tree they like to roost in, or is it is it more about like the elements of the surrounding? I you know what I've seen, and and people and listeners would know way more about this than I do. I um, I'm sure they have specific trees that they like to get into. From from my experience, I've seen them roost in in trees that I didn't think that they could hold a bird of right. <laughs> you know, it's it's like this it's this little branch and then there's other trees around it that are just big and just mature and could absolutely hold like a mountain lion. And then next to it's like this little dinky tree well, at least it's like there's thin, thin branches, and there's a huge turkey sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then I've also seen them fly over to you know tall pines, pines yeah. and sit there and um, you know shot call out of those things, shot gobble out of them. It's just, yeah, so you know I'm I'm sure there's a I'm, I'm not in front of a computer to look it up right now, but um, from my experience, I've seen them all over the place. Okay, so all right, so. We went off on a little tangent there. My my fault. So, oh, but also to answer your question, I do think it has more to do with uh, surrounding. 
Okay. Yeah, no. Um, Because my, yeah, I just was curious from my experience. It's been only one type of tree, but it hasn't been. My experience is not really. Has yours been pine? Yeah, pines. Yeah. And not like full pines, you know, like very like broken where like the majority of like the healthy foliage is way at the top. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, okay. Same so, here. so yeah, they're f- not in like a Christmas tree. Yeah. Yeah. Not in like a Christmas tree. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, very technical term. <laughs> a Christmas tree. Um, so you, you found this place uh, out at uh, bald mountain and then you put a stealth camera. So yep. explain, explain the, you know, the, st- the strategy behind placing a camera where he did. Well, you know, it's, it's part turkey, part deer, part just, you know, curious on people's foot traffic. So, um, haven't seen anybody walking back there. I did follow, um, I did, I did see, well, I haven't caught anybody on camera walking back there, but I did, um, after I walked back there, I went back the next day cause something fell in front of it. And so I wanted to, I wanted to move it. So I had a better shot down to the water. And so I went back there and there were some fresh tracks from a, from somebody that was walking just the trail, not back to my camera, but, um, some of the trails back there. So, um, my, my purpose was to just capture what's moving nature, what's around still. I would love to see deer, would love to see turkey. And the, the whole thing is I know there's turkey back there. And so when it comes down to it, I'll still continue to scout. Um, not every day by any means, not even every week, but, um, leading up to it, some of these heavier snowfalls, I'll go back there and just look for, um, you know, their tracks, their droppings, feathers, uh, especially leading up to, um, opening day in April. It really counts the day, you know, the, the week leading up to opening day is when you want to be in the woods and um and find out where they're moving very cool yeah i i think um so something that i've learned and i didn't realize it was you know michigan was on you know the top part of this list but so according to the um wild like the wild turkey foundation um michigan is actually number four on the list for most like you know harvest turkeys every year Wow, that's that's interesting. I didn't know that either because our our limit is one. Yeah, and we do have a spring. Well, we don't always have a fall. Uh, and and some and that kind of goes by county, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah, like for instance, so, uh, or even spring. For instance, three, four, uh, I think four seasons ago, up where our property is, up in Oscoda, Tawas area we didn't have spring Turkey for I think three or four years. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, so it is based on County. Yes. Yeah. So there's a spring season Tom only or, or a bearded bearded Turkey only. And then the spring or a fall, I keep mixing those up, but the fall will, um, it will open up to either or. So sometimes hens. it's actually only hen. Yeah. There, there's so many, uh, gosh, there's so many fascinating stats about like the survival rate of turkeys. I don't know if you're if you're on that yet, but uh, when you're digging through the computer, but the survival rate is it's um, it's amazing how many of them don't make it. Yeah. So do you do you have? I mean, why why is that the case? Well, they're they're just they're easily so like deer for instance when when a fawn's born they don't give off a scent and then um and their and their mom the doe is is very i mean they're going as far as eating the um the droppings from a fawn they're strategically moving them they have these spots that are you know they're just laying down low in the in surrounding areas that protect them from predators, being able to visually point them out. Uh, A a turkey, when it's born, it's just, it's, it's an easily, I mean, you you get 
snakes, owl. I guess owls are a oh. big predator. Um, of course, fox, coyote, bobcat. But uh, yeah, bobcat, hawks. Um, the the bird scene gets uh, gets ugly. Huh. Birds against birds. And it's interesting yeah, I guess because owls you will go in there and tear them up. It's interesting oh, though because you see them at raccoons. Yeah. Well, think about it. Like, you know, turkey Turkey has a little uh, nest, and the hen will just be sitting in the middle of the woods. So they, they have the they have their um, babies on the floor of the forest. And so survival rate is most of those are not going to make it. Yeah. Pretty wild. Yeah, it is crazy, especially – See, I would have, I would have thought they would have had. I'm what you're sharing with me makes sense, especially being young when they're first born. But I mean, they're they're very like aggressive birds in a sense, especially in my head. They're traveling in larger packs. Like, I mean, you would, you know, I don't know. Yeah, but a, so a, a hen when when they do go in and and have offspring, they are. They're solo, so they're not like they're not rolling in the big flock. Yeah, no, that does make sense. And yeah, they're aggressive birds. That's why only a, that's why some of them make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Survival of the fittest. That's it, though. Yeah, literally. Like, I mean, that's definition of survival of the fittest. Yeah, I mean that that uh, that hen isn't gonna, from my understanding, is gonna do everything it can to not get off those eggs. Like, it's not it's not happening. Not leaving that nest. All right. So going into the beginning of February, what, uh, so what, what for Michigan specifically? So there's still time to, to what? Go, go to the, go get a tag. Or I'm sorry, go, you enter into the lottery. Yeah. So you apply for a tag. Um, you get a first and second choice. Well, depending on what you're looking for, but in Michigan, it all ends February 1. So you got to get it done this uh, this week. Once this um, once this episode drops, it'll be the final week to get uh, to apply for a turkey tag in Michigan. Um, you do have if you, if you for some reason you forget or you miss or whatever, um, you can pick up leftover tags. And typically there are um, you you if you miss this week, you're still going to be able to hunt for fall turkey for a spring spring turkey there are always leftover tags it just might not be um you know your first choice and chances are you're not going to get opening week but last last year i for some reason didn't uh do it on time and so i was able to pick up a leftover tag for week two and three there it was a consecutive um day tag nice um, so the lot, yeah. So the lottery is five dollars, like Brandon was saying, till the end of this month, February first, is the cutoff. You don't need a base license to apply. You will if you do get awarded a tag and you you want to go hunt. You're going to have to go get your base license, of course. Aside from the turkey tag, which I believe is twenty dollars. Yeah. After the fact, it's five to apply, fifteen for the tag. Leftover tags, I think, are twenty bucks though. Well worth Is that it. right? Oh yeah. No, I'm uh, just I'm double checking here. Um you are looking at do, 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 fifteen. Yeah, so you're looking at you're looking at the base is eleven bucks, so five, sixteen. You're looking at, you know, thirty thirty one dollars out the door for everything. Including yeah, the application. That to get you out in the woods. Yep. Um you know, and some equipment you're going to want to use. They have an incredible, um, they have an incredible vision. So you're going to want to be in all camo. Um, mobile is typically the way to go. Some people just park up under a tree, build a little ground blind around them with just nearby sticks and branches and, and things like that. Um, and, and you might want to be even moving. Um, and, and you're just continuously building little things like that or just finding good uh, a good backdrop, thick brush, and a tree, 
and then and then calling accordingly based on where you're identifying where the flock is moving. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, some people will bring out like mobile ground blinds, uh, pop up blinds, a little more bulky and kind of kind time consuming. <laughs> at least if you're me and trying to uh, fold it correctly and get into a little bag and then move. So I prefer either building my own little ground blinds as I move, um, or uh, there's the like the call it the camo burlap over some some sticks. There's a few systems out there that are real easy to uh, set up and and pick up and move with. So people and and that could go for gosh, you know, free of course if you're making it or um, you know, uh, eighty a hundred bucks pop up blind or uh, you know twenty or forty for that that burlap stick setup. So you, you got that. Um, some people will use. I like to even have a like a face mask over, S- similar to if you're deer hunting out in a in a tree. Just use that same. A lot of that stuff that I use in for deer early season uh, spring turkey. It can get cold here in Michigan, so there there are days that are that get into the 30s, and um, you know you you want to be <laughs> you want to be bundled up, yeah. uh, but able to move still. And then um, firearm selection. Um, some people use a bow. That's fine. You can use uh, you can use a compound. You can use a crossbow. You can use um, twenty gauge, twelve gauge. Uh, a lot of people argue that the the four ten is um, is their preferred firearm or caliber of choice. Uh, I use a 12 gauge Breda and I, and I, I take, um, I change out the choke though. I put a Turkey choke on it. You can buy literally a uh, Google Turkey choke or go to your local, uh, sporting goods store, sportsman's warehouse, or there's a Cabela or something like that, Bass Pro, uh, or outdoor world they're called and get a Turkey choke. It's just a, it's a, it's, it's a tighter pattern for uh, your shotgun shells or your, your shotgun um, BBs will just be in a tighter pattern. So you'll, you'll want to get out and uh, take a few practice shots to see what you're shooting. Um, yeah, I have a 12 gauge Breda with a Breda fitted turkey choke. And you're always like a, like a deer. You're going to want to do like a, you know, double lung, something like that. <clears throat> double lung back heart. With a turkey, you're literally trying to shoot its head off. <laughs> so it sounds, yeah, man, it Impressive. sounds crazy. Yeah. But think of all that big, beautiful meat. meat. And we're out there to, of course, have fun. But um, at the end of the day, I'm trying to eat some wild turkey. That thunder chicken's delicious. And as I can do, I'll do everything I can to not spoil or ruin any ounce of that meat. So when you're practicing, you can get a uh, little sheets of, you know, a turkey, <laughs> uh, turkey target, and you're you're trying to see where you're aiming and how that pattern, because it's a tight pattern. It's not like you're when you're out there shooting sport clays or or even duck hunting with with smaller number of shots. It's it's tight. So um, you're wanting to aim like I, I personally like to aim where the where the the neck meets the body and if if i feel like if you aim right there you're you might get a little bit of meat but you're also not going to (laughs) miss and that's you know that's for um that's a little tip because sometimes if you if you aim for the head and you take a shot and that, that little thing a turkey they're agile heads, man. They're, they're bopping around or, you know, they're trying to look at different things, that big little eye that they, that big eye they've got just, you know, looking around and trying to scope you out. So you, last thing I'd want to do is finally get a thunder chicken to call in. Uh, I see it gets in shooting range and, you know, you're, you're lucky enough to have the gun up and still undetected, take a shot. And, you know, the thing bobs its head some way and you miss and it takes off running 25 miles an hour and out of here. 
<laughs> I did not know 25 miles an hour, but they do move fast once they get spooked. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't believe that either. Um, so okay, I, I've never you, seen it go 25 miles an hour, but it, it definitely disappears. And once it's gone, he's gone. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you have? Do you have? T- I mean, obviously, this is based on experience, skill set, all that. But do you have time to to rock two to rock two shots, or is it like you got one shot? Oh yeah, no, you. Um, it it just it depends. So like last year, I uh, <laughs> I I took a shot and hit the bird and they're, they're resilient birds, man. They, <clears throat> it, it hit the ground and it got back up and flew five feet off the ground for about a hundred and something yards into a, into a wood line back to where I, I think they were roosting that morning. And it was a, it was a early evening shot hour or two before sundown and uh about an hour and a half to sundown something like that two hours and it flew back there so i brandon i actually oh yep. hang on all right so real quick so it flew back to the tree line where you think it was roosting and then finish or keep going from there yeah and i had to uh I, I just couldn't believe it. I knew I hit it. I saw it drop the ground. I went out there. I saw the feathers in the ground. And this thing was still alive. So, one, I felt bad that now we have a wounded turkey on our hands. And, two, I'm, I'm really hoping that I can go retrieve this thing. So, um, <laughs> I walked back into the tree line and, uh, and literally kicked it up within – it was like, I didn't see it, but it jumped up when it was like five, ten feet. It was probably ten feet from me. And it, and it jumped up and started running. And uh, I put a second shot into it. And then it, um, he was harvested. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So, yep. Um, lucky that I, I found the bird and got the shot off. Um but I've, I've certainly seen like two shots for sure. I've seen that happen plenty of times, but I've also called in birds. Like last year I called in one and uh, I got a little greedy. I, I wanted it to, it was, it was at, you know, 40 yards, which is, which I think is a, it's a kind of a long shot. It's not, it's not terrible. It's not out of range with a turkey choke 12 gauge, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a longer shot. And, I was hoping that he was going to come into like, you know, 15, 20. You can get these things to come in eight yards in front of you. Oh my gosh. If you're, if you're just straight up undetected, a great, a great spot. They come in from the right way too. That's, that's a yeah. Gamble. I was going to say coming in from, you know, the side. Because sometimes they, they, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll kind of sh- go straight at you, but every once in a while you'll get them to, they'll, they'll just stop returning your they'll stop making noise and then you'll just you'll have to hear you have to listen for them they're just drumming and and you just hear them uh just drumming through the woods it's it's really neat gosh turkey hunting is so yeah, fun i i cannot wait to experience turkey hunting <laughs> i mean i've been turkey oh hunting, my point is like it's, it's drumming and then all of a sudden it will like loop around almost like a predator approaching or like a, how a deer approaches yeah. Like a like a food plot, they they won't just go straight at it. They'll want to try to check wind or something like that. I think a turkey does that. They're not checking wind because they don't have a sense of smell for anything. But they're they're certainly trying to eye out the situation and then going for um, where that hen's at. And my my thing is, I was when when I did that, I was calling. Turkey came in, and they're they're confused because they don't see anything so they're looking around like wait a minute i just heard that i know it's coming from right there where you know where's my beautiful lady (laughs) and and you want it to come in like another 10 yards and take a shot but i'm pretty sure he saw me and (laughs) skedaddled (laughs) well brandon i mean i hope you didn't take that too personally like obviously you know you're you're a good looking guy but just maybe not for that that turkey (laughs) <laughs> Man, bummer, bummer, bummer. You know, I, I was against a tree. I didn't know what I, – I knew he was coming in from one side, 
but he came in kind of from um, like behind me and then on the side of me. And I, I just, I don't think I was covered. For, I, I wasn't, I was not ready for him to show up as fast as he did. I was not when, ready when that, to turkey hunt. <laughs> that particular, yeah, that particular time it was, <clears throat> I was sort of shocked that he even came into my, my calling. <laughs> Oh, it's fun. What do you think? And, and I know we got to wrap this up pretty soon. What do you think? Um, so somebody like myself, you know, amateur turkey hunter, I wouldn't even put amateur on that list, but what, what's probably one of the more important things, um, equipment wise, uh, that, that you would recommend, like, like what just you absolute must do have, et cetera. Um, <laughs> patience. <laughs> yeah really i think it is i i think um i think for anybody turkeys are it's, it's just so fun because no matter what if you can get out in the woods in the evening try to find out so binoculars are are important binoculars are would are really nice to have if you have a good set of binoculars you can get there um when they start roosting in the the night before you hunt <clears throat> and, and you can do a couple uh, locator calls or, you know, uh, let's say you don't have any calls and you just wait for the owl or, you know, whatever to, to start making noise in the woods, they will shot gobble up and roost at nighttime. And so if you have a good pair of binoculars and, and you start glassing where those, those calls are coming from and you can pinpoint where they're, which tree they're in without getting too close um, while the light is really low. That is, that's a great advantage to have. And likewise in the morning. So um, let's say you didn't get that opportunity to, to get there in the, uh, in the evening, the night before you show up there. Um, it, it's, it's like you're hunting in the dark. So you're getting out there early. Um, they're still sleeping. They're not making noise. Nothing's moving in the woods and you go, flip into a spot where you think is going to be a good uh, turkey spot close to roost or in transition between roost and where they're going to go feed for the day. Um, as soon as the sun starts coming up, shooting hours are a half hour before sunrise. Uh, same, same like with whitetail, but at that time it's still pretty dark out. So having a good part, pair of binos to, they'll, cause they'll start talking again in the morning. So whether this is your first time turkey hunting or you've been doing it for, for decades, just haven't gone out in a while, I encourage everybody to get out there and just experience the thunder chicken oh, in the evening, in the morning. Uh, Cause just that alone. Um, and, and if you do want to mess around and you do have a, you know, you have a, just even you're testing out your call, a box call is so easy to, you know, er, 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 it's super <laughs> They'll, they'll respond to that. It's crazy. And so as long as you're out there having fun, I um, encourage everybody to get out there and uh, hopefully you get one harvested. No, oh, yeah. So solid words. So binoculars. Binos and good, patience. Uh, and, uh, and camo. you got to be out there camo. in camo. If you're wearing blue jeans or if you're wearing like a you know red flannel, I, I find myself wearing red flannels quite often. Or, uh, you know, just colors. They're, they're not going to. You'll experience the the talking back and forth, but uh, the chances of them coming into you are not likely. Camos, binos, patience. Yeah. <laughs> have some fun. And have some fun, Brandon. I'm very patient. Well, <laughs> I especially if you're first out there, you start you start making that that hen cluck. Uh, they'll respond the patience comes into play because if you keep doing it back and forth, they keep responding, but eventually they're not going to come your way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you, you've already warned out your welcome of communication. Yeah, actually we should, uh, that's another podcast. Cause I, I would like to hear some strategy behind calling. We should do that next. Yeah. Talk about, and then going out in two man teams, three man teams or, or woman teams. I'm saying man, just as a general term, but, uh, there's plenty of, of women out there that crush a lot more, many more turkeys than I have. So um, it's a it's a 
children's sport. It's a, I mean, it's, it's, it's for all ages, which is awesome. All legal ages, of course. Get out there, have some fun, and if uh, if your young ones aren't old enough to, um, to to get a tag, just experience out there. Um, family bonding, friends, it's uh, it can be a team sport for sure. Calling strategies, we'll get into that next time. It sounds like I love it. Turkey hunting and team sports. It's true though. <laughs> no, I, I love that. Turkey hunting is a team sport. Hey, should have uh, had that when we were in high school. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, I would have liked God. high school much better. <laughs> oh my goodness! I probably would have never gone because they've been, you know, showing me all these things about hunting. And I would have just been in the woods. It was already hard to yeah. keep me in high school, especially like towards the end. Last probably would have saved me, you know, the concussions I got from football and hockey. But <laughs> uh, yeah. maybe Brandon. maybe I'd be a better shot. Maybe I'd be a, be a better shot. <laughs> <laughs> Everything would be aligned. In line, right? <laughs> that's funny. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious, Brandon. I'm I'm really excited to uh, to get in the woods with you. Well, uh, when it comes, to, yeah. Well, with I mean, with everything that we do, but for for turkey specifically. So, for and, sure, uh, we'll get out there soon together. Uh, I can't wait, scouting. man. Oh, soon, very soon. Next episode, we gotta start talking about uh, some of the the turkey turkey situation up in Ascota. And we have fishing coming up. Yep. So. That is definitely something I'm looking forward to uh, plugging in. I will be going ice fishing next week. So um, we'll have some stuff to report, hopefully. Ice fishing. Looking for some walleye. Oh, my gosh. So fun. Close this out, Brandon. Well, appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. If, um, Of course, if you, if you like this episode, we appreciate a, a like and uh, subscribe. Um, I think our, our social channels are also listed in the description. Um, share with friends. And um, if there's any way we can help an organization, a cause, uh, a new hunter, you name it, uh, angler, um, please send us a, a message. We'd love to figure out a way where we can contribute or help um, those causes or people out. And, um, 10% of all of our proceeds from our shop, of course, are donated to, um, right now, Ducks Unlimited um, or the NDA, depending on which merchandise is bought. We will be coming out with some stuff for uh, the upcoming seasons. Um, but until then, stay tuned. Uh, we appreciate you. And get out in the woods. Find some tracks and sign. Awesome. That's all I got. Great, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you.